All right, Shalom. Kahalayim la. Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Rakah Hakodash. Double honors must to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Must peace, love, and salutation to all the brothers from this work and truth to sincerity. Shalom. This is the, your brother Batak. Back again through the spirit with another lesson. Uh, low will he be edifying. So, um, I was just, you know, reading the book of Luke, you know, over currently right now I'm in the book of the, ch the 13, ugh, 13th chapter of the book of Luke. And I just read this parable about the, you know, the fig tree, you know, and it's just, you know, the spirit hopped on me to do a quick lesson concerning it. And the Lord willing, I'm going to find a couple of precepts to go along with it. And the Lord willing be edifying, you know, it's all through the spirit, man. So, you know, trust in the Lord, the Lord got me, Lord willing, you know, the lesson be edifying. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 6. It says, He spake also this parable. This is referring to Yahweh Shah. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. You know, now, if you know, uh, back in those times, they, they had a more traditional way of living. They lived off the land. So whatever you, you know, you plant, whatever vineyards or whatever things that you plant, you expect to you expect those things to yield fruit in order for you to be able to feed you know what i'm saying you to be uh to, to eat you know like you got cattle you expect your cattle to do their job you know you expect you got goats you got sheep you got all these other things you expect something from those things because they're ultimately their uh cattle and things like this is currency you know like especially cattle their currency because they have to till the land and things like that but um, the point being, you expect you you there's a certain expectation from these things that you expect in order for you to survive. Because if you don't have these things, then you will not survive. So just keep that in mind. It says, and he came and sought the fruit thereon and found none. So you plant a, a fig tree, and you come to it and you don't see no figs on it, or you plant an apple tree. And you go and, you know, you don't see any apples on it. Same with a watermelon tree seed, you know. You plant all these seeds, but they're not yielding any fruit. Because that that plant is shown to be unprofitable. Uh, let's keep reading. Verse 7, it says, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit of this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, white contembereth it the ground so if we are those if you plant a tree a fig tree and it's been three years and it has not yielded any fruit then there's a problem there there's a big problem there and that is referencing to us brothers that are inside of this ministry it's a parable it's a dark sin. It's a hidden sin. You know, let me see. I'm going to look up the word parable. It says a uh, allegorical or metaf metaphorical narrative, usually having a moral for instruction. And what's the instruction for this parable? To be, if we are those fruit, we are those trees, we are that, um, yeah, those trees, we need to bring forth fruit. That's why the scripture says, bring forth fruit, meek for repentance. Uh, meek for repentance. Am I spelling something wrong? Because I know I'm not wrong about this scripture. Oh, meat for repentance. Yeah, it is. Um, Matthew 3 and 8 It says bring forth Therefore fruits Meat for repentance Because uh, Acts 26 and 20 It says but, it says, but shoo, shoo first unto them Of Damascus And at Jerusalem And throughout all the coast of Judea And then to the Gentiles Which is talking about Israelite You know Israelite foreigners That they should repent And turn to the Most High and do works meet for repentance. So we have to bring forth fruit meet for repentance, man. 
you know it's very important so okay the word parable it says saying or story in which something is expressed in terms of something else parabolic style in writing it's, it's from the Greek parabol which means a comparison parable literally to a throwing beside so you know that's you know it's very plain and simple with a uh, by way of these definitions that what a, um, a parable is this is the Luke chapter 13 verse 8 it says and he answering said unto him Lord let it alone this year also till I go I, till I shall dig about it and dung it and if it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shalt cut it down so we are those we are those trees that shall must bring forth fruit Yahweh shall said that you you shall know a tree by its fruits you know and we are all part of that 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 uh family tree of the elders and apostles of great millstone because they was they set they set up that tree the lord yahweh shot set them up and they have been branching off and you know bringing forth fruit that's why they have camps all throughout the united states and all throughout the world because those men have been bringing forth fruit they've been teaching the correct doctrine therefore that tree is budding all kinds of beautiful fruits you know you got you know i'm just saying hypothetically you know you got oranges you got beautiful apples you know of course trees don't mix fruit but you know i'm just you know just saying because you have the different camps you have the different branches of this tree you know strong branches of of this tree you know you know just hypothetically speaking we are all a part of that branch we are all part of that tree and we're all ultimately a part of Yahweh, that branch of Yahweh Shah, man. So let's get a few free precepts on that. Because Yahweh Shah is that branch. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the book of um hold on let me make sure I got everything off of here since I um quoted that scripture I'm gonna get Ye shall know a tree by its fruits, something to that effect. All right, here's a good example. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter, chapter 7. This is Matthew, chapter 7. I'm going to start at 16. It says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or of thistles? Even so, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So we have to bring forth fruit in this ministry. That means we have to we have to grow. A tree does not stay the same stay the same size. You know, if you once you plant that seed, that that seed is planted, it gets nourished, and it grows. We can't be that tree that's just not bearing no fruit and not in and not growing, man. This this truth demands growth. You have to grow. It means you have to you have to increase. You have to do more. You know? It says um verse let's see, verse 19. Every tree that beareth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And you don't want to be a part of that. If you're not bearing if you're not bringing forth fruit, then you ultimately going to be kicked out of the out of the truth, man. Because it is a certain expectation when you are part of the, the ministry of Yahweh by Shema Shah, you have to, you know, you have to do your job. You can't be at work and just be lazy all goddamn day, do what you want to do and think you're going to get paid. No, 
You don't do that with Esau. You can't do that with the Lord. There's no great areas, man. There's a certain requirement. You have to increase. You have to read. You have to learn. You have to increase in learning. You have to increase in knowledge of the scriptures. You have to grow. That's a part of growth. Because every time you read the scriptures, you always you always learn something new, man. You always learn something new. Because what? The scripture says the word is a fountain of living waters. There is no limit to the possibilities. There is no limit to the... Um, the um, What's the word I'm looking for? There is no limit to the knowledge. There's no limit. There's no cap. The Lord's wisdom is infinite. I believe the scripture says that. Yeah. Infinite. I believe it's the scripture that says the wisdom of the Lord is infinite. Could be wrong. But we know in the instant the wisdom of the Lord to be very vast, man. Very vast. It doesn't exactly say infinite, but um I thought it was a scripture that says that, but carrying on the book of Matthew chapter seven, verse 20, it says, wherefore, by their, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. So you shall know a tree by his fruits, man, you know, and we all a part of that, that, that branch of Yahweh Shah. Let me see if I can find the precept. It's one in Jeremiah 2 that speaks about the branch. Or is it Ezekiel? Or is it actually Jeremiah? This is the book of Jeremiah 23 and 5. You know what? Yeah. It says... Behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall ex execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now, let's go to it in the blue letter. Blue letter. What was that? Jeremiah 23 and 5. Jeremiah, where is it at? Jeremiah chapter 20. Oops, lock like it. Not 28, 23. 23 and 5. Just look at that word branch. See what the mean. See if I can get a meaning off that word. Okay, word. Okay, the Hebrew word there, if I'm not mistaken, is um Samah. Sama. It says a sp sprout growth branch, sprouting growth, sprout growth of process, sprout shoot. It says of Messiah from David tree. So basically, Yahweh shot coming from the Yahweh shot coming from the family line of David. Okay, there's uh, literally to sprout, to springing, to grow. Okay, Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And that branch, that righteous branch is referring to Yahweh Shah Mashiach because Yahweh Shah was a direct descendant. He was in the family line of David. It says, he was the son of David also, <laughs> which is who? King Solomon. 
and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And who fixed the description? Yahweh Shah is that king. The book of Matthew will tell you that. Matthew, um, I believe, 2 and 6. Verse, verse 6, it says, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Right, because Yahweh Shah is what? The chief cornerstone. He's bringing the, the, the northern and the southern tribe back together. Now, when you look up the word cornerstone, which is, you know, it's, it's, that's why you got to look up words. The word cornerstone, it says stone, which lies at the corner of two walls. Now, what now what would be an example of the two walls? Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. It says and unites them. Because at one point in time, the southern and the, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom was split. <clears throat> Where is that scripture that said cornerstone? Uh, it's in Isaiah, I believe. I will lay in Zion a precious corner. Oh, here it is, Isaiah twenty six and eighteen. 16 it says therefore thus said the lord yahweh behold i will lay in zion for a foundation for a foundation a stone now what is that stone build house rock that 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 rock that stone is talking about yahweh shah Ugh. Luke 6 and 48 it says he is that he is like a man which built a house and digged a deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose the streams beat vehemently upon the house and that and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock so that rock is Yahweh shot man Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 it says therefore does said the Lord Yahweh behold I will lay I lay I lay in Zion a foundation for a foundation, a stone, a tribe stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So that that tribe stone is Yahweh Shah, that precious cornerstone that brings the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom and the gent so-called gentiles which are israelite foreigners back together under one fold is yahweh shai because he is the he's gathering them back together man we're coming back together yahweh shai is unifying the nation of israel by way of the word man the scriptures speak about unity how beautiful is a brother to dwell in unity This is verse 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So Yahweh Shah is also going to bring ju judgment. He's going to bring righteousness. Verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. That means canceled. Basically, it means canceled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing search shall pass through, then ye shall be trotted down by it. So our people have made a, a agreement with death, which is, uh, you know, these chains of darkness following after the flesh. That's why we have to have, well, that's why we, ha we have to be changed. You know, our bodies need to be changed because of, of this purpose, this very same reason. So, you know, by... The Lord disannoying that covenant with death that our people are stuck in. We're gonna live forever. We're gonna enjoy immortality. Okay, this is uh Jeremiah 23 and 6. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. Right? It's referring to the southern and northern kingdom coming back together. And you know, you know, like I was saying through the spirit, you know, the Lord Yahweh shall unify us, make us one nation again. This is his this is his name. Whereby he shall be called Yahweh, our righteousness.
righteousness. Okay. The word righteousness is uh, justice, righteous, righteous, rightness, righteousness, what is right or just or normal, rightness, justness of weights and measures, righteousness and government of judge, rulers, kings, of law, of David, of David, king, Messiah, of Jerusalem, as seat of just judgment, of the God's attributes. So Jerusalem is going to be the seat of just uh, of of just government which is going to be spearheaded by who Yahweh Shah righteousness justice in case of cause rightness in speech rightness in ethically right as ethically right righteousness are vindicated justification controversy deliverance victory prosperity So So under Yahweh Shah there's going to be a government of righteous judges, rulers, kings. It's going to be righteous law. There's going to be a righteous king and there's going to be a righteous seat of government. And uh, Yahweh Shah is going to bring all of these things according to the scriptures. Jeremiah 23 and 7. Therefore behold the days come said Yahweh that that it says that, that they shall no more say the Yahweh liveth that which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth which brought up the ch brought up brought up Salakia. Wait, let me read, read verse eight. It says, "But Yahweh liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, which is uh, America, North America, and many other places, uh, other places, and from all." countries whether i have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land what is this this is the second exodus the first exodus was already is already recorded in history happened years ago <clears throat> but the second exodus is going to happen when the lord brings the children of israel out of the land of the north which is north america north central south america And the word north literally means toward literally means north. Okay, um Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 It says And speak to him saying Thus, said, thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts saying Behold the man whose name is the branch And he Behold the man whose name is the branch Which is talked about Yahweh Shah And he shall grow up Out of his place and he shall build And he shall build the temple of Yahweh Even shall even he shall build the temple of Yahweh and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne and and the council of peace shall be between between them both so that branch is that the branch is referring to Yahweh Shah Mashiach and he is the one that's building the th this third temple is being built you know because the old physical the to old temple they could have you know they kept trying to infiltrate the heathen was infiltrating the building of that temple so the lord is going to build a spiritual temple you know ultimately our temples the temples of the lord is our bodies And that's what Yahweh Shah was referring to when he was 
let's go to it. John chapter 2, verse 19 says, Then Yahweh Shah entered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and I will build, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, for forty and six, forty-six years, forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou bear, uh, rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body, because what? Our body is the temple of the Lord. First Corinthians 6 and 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own? For ye were bought with a price. Therefore glorify the most high in your body and in your spirit, which was the most high. So um the point we see fourth fruit. I believe the scriptures just popped in my head. Bring forth fruit. Matthew 3 and 10 it says and now it says and now also the axe is laid upon unto the root of the tree trees therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire Matthew 13 and 23 it says but he that receiveth seed into the ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also bring, beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So, this was um, when Yahweh was speaking up, he was saying a parable about you know the different seeds, but the the ones that receive receive the seed are ultimately the elect the Yahweh Shemel Shah, and they're gonna be you know different variations of the spirit. Some are gonna bring out more than others you know some hundredfold they have a different portion the scripture says let every man prophesy according to por proportion proportion of faith portion of faith Romans 12 and 6 it says having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to proportion of faith so every brother is going to be different I send us forth to bring forth fruit and that's the whole point of this lesson Luke 3 and 8 it says bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God the most high is able to raise is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and and now also that that axe is laid unto the root of the tree every tree which therefore which beareth not fruit good fruit Bear a slakia bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So the scriptures speak all about this man. This is um the book of John fifteen. In verse 1, John 15 and 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. More fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it, it, uh, it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So Yahweh Shai made it very clear. 
he's comparing he's comparing you know this ministry to husbandry because who's the husband husbandman who's the planter of the of of the vine who planted Yahweh Shai? his father a husbandman it says the head of the family is not Yahweh, but the head of the family is he not the heavenly father it says the former tiller of the ground husbandman a husband a person who operates a form so the lord the heavenly father Yahweh, is the the head of the family he's the husbandman and he planted the vine the vine is who Yahweh shai is the vine and we are the fruits of that vine that's how it goes man says, let me let's read it again because it's very simple john 15 and 1 i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman so Yahweh is letting you know that his father this is his father's program he's just doing the will of the father and we're doing the will of, of the father and Yahweh shot well ultimately the will of the father you know uh it says verse three it says now ye clean now verse two it says every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away so if Yahweh planted uh Yahweh planted the vine and that and that vine is not bringing forth any fruit that that brother is not doing what he's required the Lord takes him away he casts him out it says and every branch that bears fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit so he we are we gonna that's a rite of passage he's gonna the Lord is gonna purge us so we can bring forth more fruit that is uh Luke 15. Oh no, John 15. Let's see uh New Testament. John 15. Let's look at that word purge. Purge it. It says to cleanse or filth. It says to cleanse of filthy filth impurity impurity. It's not to cleanse and to 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 purge. It's not that Lord doing that to to the elect through adversity, through trials. The Lord has to try them. He has to purge them. That's making them better. That's building their character. That's making them stronger. You know, by trial we are made perfect. You know, we're made better. It's all about if you're gonna pass the fair the test, man. So with that, man. <sighs> so with that, man. Lord willing, you brothers edified with this quick lesson through the Spirit. Lord willing, is edifying, man. But you know what? I'm gonna keep reading. John chapter 15, verse um three. It says, "Now you are clean through the word which I spake unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch." cannot bear fruit of itself right so you got people out here trying to do things you know just like the uh, people that believe in the bible but they don't believe in Yahweh Shah. they're not they're not they're they're not a part of that branch so they're not bearing any fruit and it's many other people that don't put Yahweh Shah first and they're not going to bear any fruit because Yahweh Shah is the way and the truth and the light you know it says except it abide in the in the vine no more no more can ye except ye abide in me. So Yahweh shines the way. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. All right. Yahweh shines making it very clean and simple. He's he's letting you know his his office within its when the, within its truth, man. Which is very important. You gotta go through Yahweh shines. That's just the way it is. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And it is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Where well, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in love. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might be remaining in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that that, that a man that lay his life for his lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, 
if it were if ye do whatsoever I command you. So Lord willing, I mean, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying through the spirit, man. I'm gonna close out by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakaku Dash, the Mahana said apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Must peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing his work and truth to sincerity. When to say Shalom, call me Asha Allah, Wa Aba Baba, Wa Aba Adam. We gotta bring forth fruit, brothers. With that, I'm gonna say Shalom.